Boyd. Let's crack straight in there. Overview of the current situation. Let's tell them what is happening because a lot of people listening will be thinking, what's this all about? Why is this so important? Why is she so excited? What is the current situation globally with weight management in our pets? Do you want to go first on that one, Ernie, and I'll chip him? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, the the way place I like to start is how big is the problem, you know, no pun intended there. And so we do prevalence surveys in the United States. They're also uh, now coming online in the UK. And so Alex can speak to that. But in general terms, right now, when we look at the number of pets, dogs and cats, that are overweight or have obesity, we're looking at about 56% of all U.S. dogs and about 60% of all U.S. cats. Now, those numbers match up pretty closely with what, what they're finding in the U.K., and, and that just tells us it's a huge problem. If, if you want to look at it in numbers, that's almost 100 million dogs and cats in the U.S. Wow. that are at risk for lots of avoidable diseases because when Alex and I are talking about obesity in pets, we instantly are thinking about a disease state, and we're thinking about how is this going to affect that pet's longevity and maybe more importantly, its quality of life. Quite yeah, and certainly we we they, we didn't have quite as many established surveys as as in the states, and certainly the um, the APOC ones that you talked about there um, are, are great. But the numbers from what we have are very similar. Um, so certainly, at least a half of all our pets, sadly, are either overweight or have obesity. I think the thing um, as a, a study I was involved with uh, a couple of years back that concerned me most, though was that we're seeing an increasing trend of dogs and cats, even during their growth phase, that are, are above their ideal weight. Um, uh, we sort of had about a quarter to a third or so. Um, now, they, they're not, they didn't sort of have extreme obesity at that particular point, but I, my worry is because this is a lifelong condition, it's very difficult to treat, we'll come on to that later. Um, if, we, if we're seeing an increase in that population, then it's going to be a ticking time bomb for, for later on in life, sadly. It really, really is. And I, I think it's a really good chance now to step into why are we worried about it? Because I know that in practice, a lot of people go, oh, he's just a bit plump. Oh, he's just carrying a bit of weight. Oh, it's nothing to worry about. And I know that I also grew up with my mum saying, you're going to grow out and then you grow up. And I actually did grow out and grow up. But um, and she did that kind of chat to me and my brothers and sisters as we were kids. Oh, you'll grow into it. Don't worry about it. Why is it such a big problem? Yeah, I think I think the first thing we need to establish is that it is a serious condition. I mean, this is a mm -hmm. medical condition like having kidney failure or heart disease or even cancer. I mean, this is something that really affects every aspect of your pet's life, including shortening it, right? But more importantly, I think where Alex and I have, have gotten frustrated within our own profession maybe is because people don't understand the impact it has on quality of life. Now, Alex has done some amazing research to show that even a small amount of weight loss in dogs can have significant improvements in their quality of life. So just a 6% weight loss in a dog can allow the owner to say, oh my gosh, my dog Buster now is happier. You know, they feel better and, and that's tremendous. But what we're looking at is our diseases, of course, like diabetes, you know, and insulin resistance, which I kind of like to lump in there because they're both very destructive and harmful. Many forms of cancer are directly related to all of those harmful chemicals that excess fat produces mm -hmm. high blood pressure, heart disease kidney disease. I mean, Alex, we know there's a very long list of serious consequences, but at the end of the day, what if you're a pet parent watching this, the reason that that one or two extra pounds concerns doctors like, like Alex and myself is because we don't want your pet to suffer needlessly. And ultimately this ends badly for everyone. And, and it's just a, it's a heartbreaking situation, especially when you can prevent it.